Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Gary Hammond. And this is It's Movie Time. And Gary, it's a complicated business in the Mideast. It still is. Yes. And when we were over there fully engaged in Afghanistan, I was bewildered by the number of factions involved in that. So I don't know why, but I've had us do Kandahar, an actioner starring the very durable Gerard Butler. Let's look at the film, and then as we move along and get our way toward our podcast back talk, we might talk a bit about him as a uh, as a combatant on the films. But anyway, so maybe briefly, because you're a, you're an accomplished attorney and you're capable mm. of doing this, a judge would be sitting there and saying, "Gary, please get to the point." Uh, so Gary, yes, he would. What is Kandahar about? Well, Kandahar is about Gerard Butler and <laughs> uh, his his buddy are in Iran, and they are uh, CIA spies in Iran, and they are uh, doing spy things, and um, I, won't, I won't give too much away as far as that goes, but uh, the jig is up when something that they do happens. Yeah, they, they, they would call it black ops, right? Sure. Yeah, black sure. ops. To the so extent that, you know, my, my CIA days are way behind me, but, <laughs> but yes, they, we called them black ops back in the They're day. They're doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. Well, they should be for the CIA, but the Iranians aren't very happy about it. <laughs> and you said it's complicated in the Middle East. All of the factions are involved, are playing in this movie, or pretending they had, to play. Isn't that something? It's like they had a roster. Yeah. They said, okay, make sure we have this, make sure Al-Qaeda, make sure Taliban, make sure we have everybody. Make sure we have ISIS, we have Iran, <laughs> we have nuclear uh, potentiality from Iran, uh, and other things. Uh, and they all get... They don't all get equal time. Gerard Butler gets the most time of all, but he is, uh, he's capable. But actually, you know, that's a good comment. I see less of him in this one than I have in others of his. Uh, the only other movie that he was involved in that I saw uh, was The 300, and, oh, uh, yeah. which I liked very much. And I saw it with my teenage sons back in 2006, yeah. and I enjoyed it very much. But I've not been drawn to his films. And John, the only reason I saw this movie is because it's like like the uh, baseball movie. If you build it, they will come. You asked me <laughs> if I would come and review it, so I had to go see the movie. Uh, and I enjoyed it. I <laughs> could. I did, too. Uh, and but, uh, as I say, Butler doesn't overwhelm you like some of our others, like, say, Stallone would uh, in his films. Uh, um, Mel Gibson, whatever, back in the 80s, if you wanted to say that this is a throwback to the 80s. Yeah, and I think maybe it's a throw. and I was, I was grappling with that, actually, and I, I went through a list like Arnold, and no, no way, and Sly Stallone, no way, and others and others, and I came up with Bruce Willis yes. in the Die Hard yeah. movies. The thing is, is that Bruce Willis, there was more humor. Bruce Willis, there was the, irony here. There's no humor in Condor? I, Let me I, send out a I search party to find it, because there sure isn't. Wow. <laughs> Holy <laughs> grim movie. <laughs> there's drama, uh, and there's irony, and uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that, but there was no humor. So I did, so I really had, I, I had made a note, I think it, it's Bruce Willis, and then I thought of him flicking his cigarette lighter, you know, in his bare feet after running through the glass and saying some smart ass thing. <laughs> yeah, and, right. And, 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 and Gerard Butler, he, I don't think he'd pull that off, although he pulled off this. I yeah, think. you know, and let me, let me disclose something that happens really early on, so I don't think we're, you know, we're compromising our audience, but uh, he and his buddy, the Black Ops guys, are blowing up a, a nuclear facility, right? John, you've told the story. No, that's... That's, that's not the story. <laughs> that's the premise for the right. chase. That's right, exactly. So why are they running 400 miles, they go, yes. to get to the border? Well, it's it's a little more complicated, but, Bru but uh, Gerard Butler leaves, and he leaves his buddy in the house, uh, and they're revealed. Their identities are disclosed, and he has gone back into... Afghanistan on a mission for this buddy of his, ah, yes. and because he is so loyal, and because he wants to make a lot of money to support his uh, daughter, uh, he's divorced from the mother, but his daughter is graduating yeah, that's from high something school, new. and he, he'll make enough money right here to send her to four years of college, and so he decides to do it. But there's more of, to it than just the money. He is, he's a guy, if you invite him, he will come. 
If yeah. you tell him we've got a mission for you to do, he, he'll go. And as the formula would have it, he has to be talking to his soon-to-be ex-wife and promising her that he'll be at his daughter's graduation, which was very similar in plane. Yeah. Uh, okay. I didn't see plane. Yeah, 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 but it's, but very it's a similar, similar premise. He had a daughter yeah. who was graduating. Then he had to get back to, now you and I know, there's no movie if he goes back to the graduation. Well, it would be a different movie. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> and no one would die. I, and I wondered if they suspect any of the Eastern types that were at that graduation. Yeah, I could see how it would work. But anyway, they need, this is all filmed in Saudi Arabia in the desert. Uh -huh. and, boy, it makes me even want to have a drink of water here. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. All right. Very dry. Um, so they're running, and I would have to say that this movie is worth seeing with one sequence only would be worth going to see. I agree, and I think I know what it is. Tell me. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think it's the night vision goggle. See, that's why I asked you to come, because you can help me out. It is. You have another one? No, that's it. That's it. And really, it's worth the price of admission. <laughs> totally. It was so exciting, so dramatic, never seen anything like it. Of course, I've revealed that I'm, I don't chase these movies. Right. Um, but I've never heard of such a thing. It was amazing. So he is, he is driving along through the desert. He's got his night vision goggles. His interpreter, his uh, translator, is, uh, is sleeping in the truck. And suddenly, and he's looking at the road ahead, and you're seeing it through his eyes, and it is so dramatic, and then it gets even more dramatic. Yeah, I mean, and there is a, a gunfire fight with a helicopter that's pretty astonishing. Yes. Uh, anyway, yeah, I agree. It was really, I say, wow, this is, a, this is a great part of this film, and worth seeing if you're an aficionado of uh, the, these kind of he heroic films, or whatever they call summer, summer stuff. If yeah. you're, you know, this is one sequence where it's like Tom Cruise in a, uh, driving his own plane, flying his own plane. Yes, this stuff is something. Yeah, this is very exciting, and it's from. Uh, but the uh, night vision, the the uh, pilot and the men that are on the helicopter uh, also have night vision goggles, and so we're seeing it through the the combatants. We're getting both sides of the fight. Yeah. All right. So we know, in the end, he's going to make it. Do we know that? John? I think we know that because this is some franchise. I can't count the number of films that Gerard Butler's in, and he's getting better every time. Well, the thing is, I cut you off, I'm sorry. No, so no. The thing is, is that he's in so many films, and you say, but this franchise doesn't depend on him surviving this particular this, that's episode. That's correct, not the same Because thing. he's a different, it's not Bruce that's Willis repeatedly in exactly. Diary. Exactly, thank you. So he could get killed in a movie, and you don't know. You're right, yep, yep. All right, so I'll take that back. Or actually, I could edit it out, if I really want to. <laughs> Uh, Don't do that. It, no, I know. It's more fun this way when I blow it. Okay. Um, okay, so I would like to hear from you. Now, I know that we can get into this with our podcast uh, a little bit later, but I'm so intrigued. Tell me why this guy is probably a billionaire already. What is it about Gerard Butler that brings him back twice in one year, at least playing, and then this one, Kandahar? Yeah, could you figure out anything about... What it is in Gerard Butler that works? Well, what it, what it is in Gerard Butler, I did some research on him uh, after I saw the movie, uh, and uh, he was almost a lawyer. He had two weeks until he became a oh. Scottish lawyer, and he decided he really wanted to be an actor, and so off he went. Wow. Uh, and this, when I saw him in The 300, the, the movie The 300 was only believable only credible because that actually happened when the 300 well, yeah, Spartans probably, yeah. in the in 400 BC or so uh, blocked the path from the Persian army. And But I thought Gerard Butler was believable in that movie, and I thought he was believable in this movie, and this movie was incredible. And yet he was believable. <laughs> he was uh, convincing, he was credible, he was capable. Capable. He was loyal. Yes. To, yes. He did it because his buddy wanted him to, and his buddy paid that back later in the movie. Uh, so that was that was all very inspiring. And so, because you believe that he really wanted to get back with his daughter. Yeah. But these guys can't give this up. They, you know, this is a narcotic for them. I mean, he turns right around and doesn't even pause when he's asked to go back, right? Or what, whatever he decides well, to do. Well, he he paused when when he had four years of tu well he paused until he had four years of tuition. 
But really, I write reason, this. Right, but that was a but good really, line. the reason that he did it, then the character's name was Roman. Uh, it really, he really did it because Roman was asking him to do it. Ah, ah. and he is compelled. Is that right? Are you sure that's the name? Now, this Roman. Oh, not his real name, but I think that was his name as the character. But maybe not. Really good, good, because they, the the name of the director is Rick Roman. Wow. W A U G. Well, I may have gotten confused. I did watch I the credits. Know, yeah, but anyway, I like it. I like your being confused. What's what? <laughs> It's refreshing. What's also interesting is the writer, Mitchell LaFortune. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me about that name for a writer. Writing. Well, I think LaFortune could be Gerard Butler's last name. But go ahead. <laughs> yes, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, he, is, he is a former military intelligence officer. Oh. Uh, that is the writer. Oh, he's got Mitchell credit. LaFortune. Now, it doesn't ask a lot of him. There's not that much dialogue, and there certainly are not long speeches. I'm sure that Gerard Butler gives a speech somewhere. He must to his buddy. He must. Keep, don't you think? They probably. He must, must have. Yeah, I don't remember have. it. It's 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 forgettable in a movie like this where everything is visual. The 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 speech I like though was the, the they're taken they're taken by a group and it looks like it's curtains and he says we're friends of the. Al Bashar, or whoever the person is, and he goes to the camp, and it's very friendly as far as that goes. And, and uh, his host explains everything about the Middle East mm. as he's talking to oh, yes. the translator. Yes. And then he proves he's he is yes. uh, explaining everything about sticky the Middle moment East. there too. Yeah. Yes, a lot of conflicting uh, interests and revenges and mm -hmm. so on. There, yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's a really good one. Uh, I, I wanted to add to your very fine profile of uh, Gerard Butler to, a, to add two other elements that uh, I'm not the only one who thinks this. Um, one, he's humane. Mm -hmm. I think he's not a robot. He's not a, a killing machine. He is more humane than most. And there's, here's the characteristic that I like about Gerard Butler. I feel that Gerard Butler is vulnerable as a character, mm -hmm. that the character he plays are vulnerable, not in any wide sense where he wouldn't be heroic, he is, but there is something about him that's less than perfect, and something about him that, that carries a bit of danger with him. Would you agree with that? I, well, uh, yeah, her, uh, courageous acts are, I think they're defined by the fact that People are in terrifying situations and are terrified and go ahead anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he was, in, this is his lifestyle. This is what he does. It, I, you had uh, referred earlier, I mean, he's addicted to it in, in yes. many ways. Uh, and he's accepted the failure of his marriage. Uh, and he's trying to have some relationship with his daughter and trying to support her. But he is addicted to the adrenaline. <laughs> uh, one, one character, before we close up this, this segment, uh, that I liked is... Uh, uh, Kahil Nasir. See the guy on the motorcycle? Yes. Yeah, he's cool. I said he great. He's cool. <laughs> he played by Ali Fazal. <laughs> what is he? He wants to he wants to capture uh, Butler's character, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. He'll settle for killing him, but he wants to capture him. Right, and his boss tells him that they want to sell uh, the they want to sell Tom uh, Tom. Gerard Butler's character on the open market. Right, to the highest bidder. Because everybody's <laughs> after him, and the Iranians are after him too, and if the Iranians get him, so, the, so uh, Khalil is uh, uh, nominally affiliated with the Taliban, uh, and there's some ISIS characters involved, uh, and there are some uh, Afghan special forces involved, uh, and it's ambiguous, <laughs> and uh, everybody is after him.